Turning to slide 28, we're going to take a closer look at the testing on, of time invariance for the order regressions and the cross lagged effects. And we stay with this example with t five time points for depression and self esteem. And we can do that uh, either by running uh, the two models and doing a chi square difference test. Since we're using MLR, we have to use this, the, those special computations that we show on the M plus website. And perhaps it's uh, easier to do it in the following way, um, which doesn't require two runs. And it's probably pretty, pretty much the same results. So we're going to use the wall chi square test, model test with MLR. And first let me show you or tell you about the results and then we can take a look at how we did it. So for the cross lag panel model with um, order regression lag 1, we can actually not reject invariance across time. And uh, with cross lag panel model order 2, we can reject but not very uh, strongly so. So this is a little uh, interesting phenomenon that happens. If you go back to slide uh, 26, you see that uh, we're looking at the comparison between the invariant model and the cross lag free model, free order regressions and cross lags. Neither model fits well. N both models fit poorly. And the chi square difference test is not designed to work well in that uh, connection. So I would say that um, this is a false result and that we should not rely on because the two models, neither model fits well. So it doesn't matter that uh, the invariance test can't reject uh, invariance. If we look at the other models that have the random intercept in it, we see a clear rejection of the invariance across time. So here it's clear that we should work with a model that we looked at before with varying auto regressions and cross lags. It has it clearly reject invariance across time and also for RI ARMA. So it's interesting that that CLPM1 model is rejected not only in, in its non invariant case. Uh, or, or rather it's rejected not only in the invariant case that Ort uh, presents in the paper, but also in the uh, non-invariant case. And even the CLPM2 model would be rejected. Although once again, uh, since you don't have great fit for it, even in, in that case for the cross lag, for the uh, order two model, I would say that um, uh, the results may not be that trustworthy. But here we have uh, neighboring models that are at least one of them fits well, so we can rely on those uh, different that difference testing. So time invariance is rejected. So how do we do it? Well, here's what you have on slide 29. You have we do it for the CLPM1 model. So you have this compact way of writing it. Uh, you may prefer to write it out. S by itself and D by itself, but here it's in compact way. So we have four S on S and four D on D. So we have a total of eight order regressions. So we just list them as the free parameters they are. Same thing for the cross lags, four plus four. And then uh, in model tests, since we've given those um, parameter labels, we can use model tests to relate the second order regression to the first, the third to the first, the fourth to the first. That's for the S variable, self-esteem. And there are four parameters, so there's three comparisons to the first. It shouldn't have four, it should not have four comparisons, it should have three. Same thing for D, that starts with A6 compared to A5, 7 to 5, 8 to 5. And then you have the cross lags for S on D. You take the first four, with a comparison to the first, and then for D on S you take the last four with comparison to the, the, the first for them, which is C5. And out comes the test of the wall test with degrees of freedom 12 and the value 15 and a p-value. And again, 
we cannot reject invariance in this model, but that is due to both models being far from the true model. So on slide 30 then, to conclude from these data analysis, uh, so this is limited to the uh, depression and self-esteem analysis for the uh, T equal 5 MWI data from Ort's article and the depression analysis from uh, the uh, NLSY data of Ort. And we conclude that CLPM tends to not fit the data well which is expected from statistical considerations. It is a model that does not recognize the hierarchical multi-level nature of the data. That is, you have time within individual. It's a two-level situation. And in any two-level model, you should at least include a random intercept, if not also a random slope. A random intercept is really needed to capture the main correlation across time. There may be further correlation by order regressions among the residuals, but the major correlation is likely, or a, a major part of the correlation is likely to come from the uh, random intercept, which in psychological texts would be referred to as the trait, the stable component varying across individuals, but not varying across time. A better model is one that includes a random intercept. A random intercept cross-lag panel modeling, uh, and that's the uh, Hamaker et al. model, needs at least three time points, or more than two, and it tends to fit the data well when the number of time points is between two and seven, so three up to six, tends to fit rather well. But RI ARMA tends to be needed when you go above 6. And uh, that's what we have seen in several data sets. And note that univariate RI ARMA, you need to have more than 4, at least 5 time points for it to even be identified in the, in the univariate case. In the bivariate case, you don't need to have uh, that many or you get an over-identified model when you have t equals 5. Now the dynamic alternatives of ARMA and, and you should say D, dynamic RI ARMA, are also good for a larger number of time points, as we have seen for these data. And the choice between them and RI ARMA should be based on substantive considerations. Further considerations then on slide 31. Uh, if you are concerned about uh, confidence intervals, um, the usual symmetric confidence intervals that we get, you know, in maximum likelihood, the estimate plus minus 1.96 times the standard error, that symmetric confidence interval may not be the right kind of interval in all cases. For non-symmetric intervals, which are more general, you can actually either then do bootstrapping or you just do a Bayesian analysis which directly allows you non-symmetric intervals for the posterior parameter distribution. And I would also urge uh, Monte Carlo simulations, particularly for these new models, uh, where you get a feeling for uh, how well you can recover the parameter estimates and the standard errors, varying the number of people, the number of time point, and the effect sizes. And you also thereby can get a feeling for the power that you have to reject that the cross lag defects are zero. Now, some models, you, random intercept is not sufficient, but um, uh, you may need to add a random slope or a quadratic slope. But that can result in, uh, if you combine that with um, a structure for the uh, residuals, the within uh, cross lag defects. Um, you may get no solutions or inadmissible solutions unless t is large, much larger than uh, what we typically see around t equals 3, 4, 5. Now you can also view these models, some of these models as measurement error models, 
and you can parameterize them using the trade state error model or the measurement error AR model. And uh, we discussed that in the paper. And uh, it is, however, a more fragile type of parameterization that can easily result in no solution or in inadmissible solutions. And a future aspect of these kinds of analysis, I think, is the causal inference, causal, causal analysis, where by potential outcomes reason, reasoning and causal effect reasoning, you may want to uh, use other uh, estimation techniques to estimate the uh, cross lagged effects and try to take into account, in a more robust way, uh, unobserved time varying confounders. On the next last two slides, where I give you a bunch of references, some of which I haven't mentioned at all, but there are some good articles here. For instance, Bolan and Brandt is, is a nice one. And uh, here we have a uh, FAQ on Hammock and Mulder's uh, website, uh, a beginning of a response to the ORC article, uh, criticizing the use of the CLPM. And uh, we have uh, Usami, uh, who has, uh, towards the end of this tw 20, uh, 21 article, to point down here, has some reasoning about causal inference. So with that, uh, I'll end uh, Web Talk 4, Part 1 for Continuous Variables.